Hello, Songbirds. It's Kerry Ho from the Songbirdtree.com. And welcome to the um, live stream, episode 30 How to Sing Low Notes. Now, we spend most of our lives trying to figure out how to sing high notes, but what about the low notes? We can't forget that as well. So can't wait to get into today's content. Um, now, before we get onto that, do make sure you go and get my free mini course, How to Sing in Mixed Voice and Stop Cracking, Flipping and Straining. The link is in the description box. So just click on the link below to grab that. It's a four-part video series and it's really going to be helpful to you. Okay. All right. Well, welcome everyone again and welcome if you're here live and also welcome if you're watching later. So today is all about how to sing low notes. So I'm going to give you some amazing tips on how to sing low notes and then we're going to have a live Q&A as well. All right. So stick around um, for the great content that is today. All right. So the first thing when we are thinking about how to sing low notes is that we actually need to think up and light and not down and heavy, okay? So if you think about the way we approach high notes, right, we tend to strain and reach towards high notes. So when we're trying to sing a high note, we tend to feel like we need to really ah, reach for it. And the opposite is true for low notes. We tend to do the opposite when we're trying to sing low notes and we think down and heavy. And, in, and, and that actually makes it harder. So just like it's harder to sing high notes when we reach for it and strain for it, it's actually um, the, the same thing when we're trying to sing low notes. If we actually go down and heavy on it, we'll end up with a breathy sound and we'll end up feeling like we just don't have any sound, you know? So the first thing is that we need to think up and light, right? And not down and heavy. Okay. All right. Hey, everyone. So good to see you, Tammy. So good to see you, Kim. Sue, great to see you as well. Morning and Jonathan. Um, yeah. So that's the first thing that we've got to think of. All right. Singing low notes. Don't think down and heavy. Think up and light. Now, let's get into some exercises that's actually going to really help you do that. Okay. So the first exercise that I um, want to go through is that we need to build resonance. You know, resonance is that beautiful feeling of, you know, like when you sing in the shower and you're like, oh, I sound so good. Why? Because the sound is literally bouncing off the hard surfaces of your tiles, right? So the, the sound isn't being absorbed. You know, if you were in a room that had lots of carpet and curtains and things like that and furniture, you'd likely find that the sound gets absorbed by all those things. But in a in, in a shower, you know, in a very resonant space, you'll find that the um, the sound bounces off the hard surfaces and back at you. And it makes you feel like, whoa, my voice is like really ringy and, and beautiful, you know. And the thing is, we can actually create that with our own bodies. We can actually make the sound that we um, create bounce off the hard surfaces of our face. What's that? Your bones and your teeth. Okay. Now, if you can build this beautiful resonance, you're going to find it much easier to sing high notes um, because they will literally bounce off your bones and your teeth coming forward at you. Okay. So here is the scale that I'd like us to do together. It is a mm, mm, mm on a major triad. Now, I want you to pretend like you've got your favorite food in front of you and I want you to say, mm, mm, as if it's so delicious. You can smell the smells, you can taste the taste, right? And you're really looking forward to getting into this wonderful, gorgeous plate of food, okay? So everybody together, mm, mm, and make sure you chew on it as well, as if you are chewing on this beautiful, delicious food because you're going to feel the vibrations in your face, which is what we need in order to get that that resonance happening okay so the scale goes like this mm, 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 mm. okay so we're not going mm, mm, mm. we're actually separating the notes really helping us to get our vocal folds together and really hitting those low notes okay so mm, 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 mm. everybody together with me we go down, you're going to be tempted to get heavy and low, you know, heavy and, 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 um, and, and, you know, just like really dark and heavy on it. Don't do that. All right. You've got to keep thinking nice and bright, just like, mm -mm, okay. If anything, I want you to sing this as if you're really happy. Well done. Mm -hmm. 
sense of brightness and lightness as you did that that is just crucial to being able to sing those low notes okay aloha jonathan are you from um hawaii hey michelle hey dave good to see you hey stefan from berlin fantastic and hey izzy good to see you all all right so there's just some um you know um great resonance exercises to get you started on get, getting that brightness and that lightness in the low notes rather than heavy and down okay the second exercise is a what 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 so can you just say that with me together guys so it's b w a h what Okay, now when you say that, you should feel a sense of resonance just behind your top front teeth in the hard palate, right there, okay? Bwah, bwah, bwah. Now, uh, the B helps you to really make it forward because B is created right here in the lips, okay? So when we're trying to sing low notes, it's really important to stay forward. So apart from the resonance, this is like the next level. We've got to go, you know, really really making it really forward, okay? So the exercise goes like this. Oh, sorry. Okay, here we go. Let's do it together. Well done. See, that exercise, for me anyway, because I actually find it quite hard to sing low because I'm actually naturally a more high voice singer, I find that exercise will get me down low, so much lower than I would normally be able to sing comfortably, all right? And I hope that you're feeling the same too. So, um, yep, so we go, we, we're going to just do a few more of those again. <laughs> Well done. So that was actually pretty, pretty low. Like that's a D3 for a girl, which is usually pretty hard to do. Um, so hopefully you'll find that your lower range extends as well as you practice that exercise. Were you able to feel that sense of forwardness um, in the, the heart palette, guys? Hey, Dwight, good to see you from Canada. Fantastic. You wish you're in Hawaii. Okay, so where are you from, Jonathan? It'd be really awesome to know. Okay, cool. All right, so we've got your resonance building and you've got your bois exercise. The next exercise I'd like you to try with me to help you sing those low notes is an uh-oh, descending fifth slide. So it goes like this. Oh, okay. When we want to sing low notes, oftentimes what's actually happening is we get a bit breathy. So we sort of go, for example, ah. Uh, Ah, and we find it really low to sing low, right? What we need to do, because and, and what's happening there is your vocal folds are actually flipping out and they're not really coming together. So that's why you're not getting much of a sound, okay? So the ah, oh, or any vowels really will help you to really bring that those folds together so that there's no there's not much space between the vocal folds so that you get a more solid sound in those low notes, okay? So come along with me, guys. Ready and oh, 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 oh. Now, as we slide down, don't be thinking down and heavy. Don't be going oh, oh. All right, you're going to end up being very breathy again, okay? So think forward or up even. Oh, oh, oh. See, we're going pretty low here. Oh, oh, picking up. Oh, 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 Amazing. So hopefully you really felt that sense of your vocal folds coming together. And therefore, um, being able to really combat that sense of um, breathiness. Hey, Darren, good to see you. 
And yes, you do have a fellow Canadian. So that's cool. You guys can be best friends. Okay. Um, and then another exercise is that we've actually got to, um, you know, cultivate what we call twang. So you know that really annoying, bright, whiny sound like, nah, 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 you can't catch me. Everyone sing, uh, say that with me together. Nah, 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 you can't catch me, right? So that's a super bright sound. As you can see, there's a lot of brightness going on that we're trying to cultivate, resonance, brightness, vocal folds coming together. Twang is really, really good to just sort of, you know, take that brightness to a whole nother level, okay? And take that resonance to a whole nother level. So come along with me, guys. You're going to pretend to be three years old and uh, be a very annoying kid in the playground. And we are singing. <laughs> Keep it twangy. And the lower we go, the more annoying and the more kitty that I would like you to make it, okay? <laughs> Make it nasty. Amazing. Now I hope you all put on um, you know, your best kitty voice for that one. It's got to be annoying. If, that, if that's not annoying, it, it won't work. <laughs> okay. So there you have it, guys. Um, you know, how to sing low notes, some really good tips for you there. Make sure you're thinking up and light and not down and heavy. Build some resonance with the mm -mm scale. Build some even more forward resonance with the blah, blah, blah. Get your vocal folds really together with the ah, oh, and build your twang, all right, so that you can take your resonance and your forward placement to a whole nother level. I really hope that you found that useful. So it's live Q&A time now, guys. So um, please feel free to actually um, put your questions in the chat and I'd love to answer some of your singing questions. Um, Kim, I'm so glad that you liked the lesson. Really good to hear that. Really um, I'm glad that you thought the exercises were brilliant as well, Stefan. Yay. Hey, Kathleen, good to see you. All right. Okay. So put your uh, while you're getting ready your questions for me to answer, let me tell you about next week. So next week's live stream is, is really a subject that I really feel like is, is just something we've really got to start talking about. And um, it's going to be all about how to love your own voice, okay? It's going to be a very special tea time together. So I want you to go and grab your cup of tea or your cup of coffee or whatever it is that is your favorite beverage that helps you to relax. And me and you, we are all going to have a little bit of a heart-to-heart -heart chat, okay? Um, I reckon 10 out of 10 singers who come to see me and work with me one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, really do in, at, on some level don't like their voice, you know, whether it's a part of their voice they don't like or just generally speaking they think they have a really bad voice, whatever it is, you know. But I, I really want to talk about this because if we don't love, if we don't learn to love our voice, exactly where it is, it can actually be a real hindrance towards us getting better. So do not miss this one, guys. The link is coming up down the bottom of the screen and the link is in the description box. Go and click on it. Set yourself a reminder. It's going to be next Monday at uh, 6 p.m. EST, which is on Tuesday, uh, 10 a.m., AEDT, okay? And I would love to have you join me and let's talk about how to love your voice, okay? Really, really excited about that one. All right. Hopefully there are some questions now. Let me have a look. Let's see. I am going to see whether there are any questions for me. Hey, Dwight. Uh -huh. I'm glad that you're making friends with Darren. Um, thank you. Um, um, you're welcome. You're welcome for the tips on low notes. Fantastic. Now, I don't see any, any, um, oh, yes, here we go. Yes. Izzy is asking, do you have any tips for leading a vocal warm-up? Absolutely. Why don't you use my videos? <laughs> okay, no, that, that's, that's, you know, but you can. I mean, I've got, I've got videos that are, um, you know, all of, all of them in my live streams would be great, but, um, you know, I do have a, quite a few videos that are specifically how to warm up your voice. Um, so do go and check those out. I have some great exercises there that you can definitely use. But yeah, I mean, 
for leading a vocal workshop, I think the first tip I would say is that the first thing is that, you know, we want to make sure that we kind of break the ice and make people feel really super comfortable. Vocal exercises can feel intimidating, especially if you've never had any training. So do something fun, like stretch your body, pretend to go swimming, backstroke, you know, whatever. Get everyone loosened up in their body um, and, and just inhibitious in their minds, you know. And then as you go through the vocal warm up, you want to start with really gentle exercises like bubbles or humming mm. and then and then progressively go into sort of more you know not not strenuous but more sort of involved exercises like do something for the head voice whoo whoo those that sort of thing do something for your chest voice ah you know and then do something for your mixed voice na 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 or something like that then you will have covered the whole voice and people will feel amazingly warmed up hope that helps Okay, here we go. Another question from Michelle. Do I have to do warm up, vocal warm-ups 30 minutes um, a day every day or can I skip a day or is it good to do every day? Fantastic question. All right, so here's the thing, all right? When it comes to training our voices or warming up our voices, there really isn't a one-size-fits-all formula that works for everyone, you know? Like I'm not going to stand here and say, you must warm up your voice for 30 minutes every single day or whatever, you know? So... Um, you know, sometimes, and it depends on how you're feeling. Sometimes you'll wake up and you've had a great sleep. You're feeling energetic. You may only need 10 minutes to warm up your voice and feel amazing, right? And then other days you may have, did, you know, you may have gone to bed really late last night because you had a show and your voice is actually quite fatigued. Then you may need more. You know, you might need 30 minutes of warming up that day, right? So it honestly depends, you know. It's probably not what you wanted to hear. <laughs> but, um, you know, I guess in general, and I'm, and this is general advice, everybody is different. But generally, if you want to cultivate a daily or a regular routine of, of, of just warming up and working out your voice, you know, generally speaking, anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes is going to be good. All right. Um, and um, do you have to do it every day? I would say that as regularly as you can, but it doesn't have to be every day. In fact, I would say that if you want to do every day, take one day off, have a Sabbath, you know, um, maybe do um, five or six days a week. That is plenty as well. It's always good to give the voice a rest and to, and to just, you know, when you give yourself a rest, you also come back to it a lot more refreshed, you know, um, rather than making you yourself, you know, doing it every single day. It can get a bit boring and stale. Um, so I recommend and having a break anyway to keep it fresh yeah um yeah so generally speaking anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes is good um every day or every second day is is best if you want to do daily i would recommend five to six days a week um yeah so hopefully that helps here we go dwight is asking does opening your low notes um also help to open up your high notes um yeah look at the end of the day um you know the things that we went through today about singing low notes with building resonance and forward placement um and getting your vocal folds together will absolutely are things that you also need to sing high so yes generally speaking Yes, the answer is yes. Um, and at the end of the day, when we are developing our voice, we actually want to develop everything, um, low and high. Uh, so, yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, Stefan is asking, what could be a perfect practice schedule? Daily one hour? Okay. So, when it comes to practicing, right, it is less about how long you spend and more about how regularly you get to it. So, I would prefer if all you had – was 10 minutes, but you could do 10 minutes every day, that's going to be much better than you doing one hour once a week. Does that make sense, guys? So with, with singing practice, it's the same as, um, you know, anything that we do to develop our bodies, our, our body fitness. You know, if you went for a walk every day for even just 15 minutes, that is going to make you more fit um, and healthy than if you went for a one, you know, one or two hour run once a month. Do you know what I mean? It's exactly the same with your voice. The, the little bits that you can do more regularly are going to be a lot more useful than long periods of time, but done sporadically. Okay. So my very first tip of regular, uh, sorry, of practicing is, is that you need to be regular. Okay. Whether that is, it uh, doesn't have to be long. Okay. Now, but if you're the kind of person who's like, no, I really want to, you know, be disciplined and I want to sort of really have a daily um, practice schedule that's quite comprehensive um, and, and involved, then yeah, I mean, daily practice between half an hour to an hour every day is fantastic, you know, um, and, and I think the, the main thing is how do you actually 
sort of break up the time of your practice. And I would say that, you know, you, you've got to start start with a vocal warm-up, you know, or workout that's going to develop voice, get your voice ready to sing and also develop and build it. And, you know, if you want to spend an hour, I would spend half an hour doing that. And then the other half, you know, working on songs, you know, and when you work on songs, you want to apply your exercises into your songs as well to help you make them sound better and feel better. All right. Um, there you go. Um, here we go. Jonathan is asking, my question is about how to find better consistency. At times it feels magical and amazing and I can really get into the groove. Other times it's harder to find the rhythm and melody. So um, do you mean consistency just in terms of, you know, your voice and the way it's operating or consistency in terms of dilig- like consistently practicing? Um, well, I guess, um, you know, in terms of finding consistency in I guess just just being able to find rhythm and melody and to sing and to sing in a way that you feel optimal that just takes time you know it takes time it takes practice the more you do it the more consistent you'll become and it takes training it takes training it takes right practicing you know not just any practicing but correct practicing and often the times if you want to um, practice correctly it's the best thing to do is to work with a coach um, so look if anybody is out there wanting to work with a coach um, do know that I do offer one-on-one coaching so you can check all those details out at my website at the songbedtree.com but um yeah consistency takes time um, and the more the more you just sort of repeat and repeat and repeat I know it doesn't sound glamorous at all but that's just what it is um, the more you will become consistent that's that's just um, a fact of life um, and and I guess the other thing is um, knowing that our voice is actually our body and sometimes we can't get perfect consistency the way we really wish we could because it's the fact that it's our bodies. You know, sometimes you wake up and you're tired. Sometimes you feel sick. Sometimes you get a cold. You know what I mean? Sometimes you're feeling emotionally low and that can all really affect, you know, the consistency of our singing, you know? Um so, uh, yeah, so that's, that's you know, definitely um, just something that to bear in mind, you know, and to not beat yourself up over. So, Jonathan, I hope that that helped. Um, Sue is asking, Kerry, would it be possible for you to sing a couple of phrases from a song that shows you descending into a low range? Sorry to put you in on the spot. Well, what I'm going to do, Sue, is... I am going to show you how to apply these low exercises into a song. So, for example, let's just say, uh, let's do the blah, blah, blah exercise, okay? So, just a quick reminder of what that was, was blah, 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 right? And then what you want to do is get a song where you find it hard to sing those low notes and sing it on blah. So, for example, um... I am going to, uh, I can't think of a song. Uh, you've really put me on the spot too, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so um, so let's just go. Um, um, I'm just trying to think of a song that I find really low. Give me one sec. I'm going to look up um, a song real quick so that I can get the key. A million dreams. I'm going to try and demonstrate this with a million dreams. Um, from The Greatest Showman because I find the verses actually quite low for me. Um, all right, here we go. Okay, so. So that note there, I actually find quite hard, which you can see right now. Right? So, but the boi actually helps me at least voice it out. If I just go for it in the words, I actually find that it, it sounds really, really breathy. See that note there as well? And that's it, right? And then you put the words in there, okay? So that is how I would suggest that everybody practice. Go and find songs where you where you really find it difficult to pitch those lower notes. Sing it on boi, do it on mm as well. Do it on nye nye and you'll find that progressively um, when you put the words in that spot, it actually becomes quite a lot easier, okay? And it does take time, all right? All right, um, let's see. Is there, are there any other questions? All right. 
Here we go. I can't see any other questions. Um, no worries, Sue. I hope that that was helpful. Um, glad to hear that, Michael. All right, guys, I think that is the end of our live Q&A. Make sure you join me next week. Now, before you go, don't go anywhere. Um, I want to, um, in case you didn't hear from last week, um, I'm actually speaking at um, an online Indie Musician Summit, which is on November the 27th to 29th, and it is absolutely free to register. It is going to be the most incredible conference online. Um, there are many speakers who will be speaking on things like songwriting, and 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 um, you know singing that's me um, and like recording and you know how to market your music and all this the great stuff that that you are just gonna absolutely love and it's free it's free to register so make sure you click on the link in the description below to register um, don't miss out on this one and I'm very excited to be one of the speakers who will be speaking at this okay so I hope that I'll be able to see you there and of course don't forget that I have a free mini course how to sing in mixed voice and stop cracking flipping and straining you can sign up to get it at the link below it's a four-part video series that you're gonna absolutely love that will help you get started on singing in a beautifully connected mixed voice okay now remember uh, my website is at thesongbirdtree.com if you want to find out anything more about my online programs or about how to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, um, do make sure you go to the website to check it out. I am here to help you transform your voice, build confidence and shine on stage and in life. Now, really looking forward to seeing you next week, Songbird, for how to love your voice. Okay. Thanks, everybody. You guys are brilliant. Love you all. And um, yeah, cannot wait to see you next week, guys. All right. See you later. Bye. Have a great day. Oops.